and welcome to the Bechdel Theatre Podcast. The podcast where we talk about gender and representation on stage. I'm Pippa. And I'm Beth. And And we're your hosts. So we are especially especially pumped to bring you this episode of the Bechdel Theatre Podcast because we were fortunate enough to have an amazing, amazing chat with Katie Lung and Kai Alexander. Here's the interview. Enjoy! Hi everybody, um, welcome to another Bechdel Theatre Podcast chat. Um, we have two lovely guests for you today, uh, so we're going to ask them to introduce themselves. Would you mind introducing yourself, guests, please? Hi, everyone. Uh, my <laughs> name is Katie Lone, and I am an actor, actress, actor, actress, actor. Act- yeah. Where are you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I? My name is Kai Alexander. I too am an actor. <laughs> it's funny because so many people that, that that's such a that's thing a in itself of yeah, like the choice yeah. of like how you choose to identify mm-hmm, mm-hmm. as like an actor or actress yeah. some people feel really comfortable with actress some people politically feel like it shouldn't be gendered and mm. that everyone should be an actor I feel um, like I've been an actor for so long actress feels really like I'm an actress like jarring yeah, that's, it's so funny because that's how <laughs> when I when I call myself an actress or when I see it it's just a different voice to call and Someone an actor or an yeah. actress. But it's a bit more higher pitched. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's more like fun and pretty. Yeah. yeah. Glitter. Yeah. 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 Do you find that you get called actor much or is it mostly that people call you actresses? Like when so say for instance in like media and like press and stuff, are they normally like, oh I feel like people tennis. people call me actress more than they do act no, sorry, the other way around. Oh. They call me actor more than they do actress. It's standardised in mm, things like, yeah. like, I think most broadsheet newspapers now have it in their like set, like terms that they use. That, oh, that's good. That it's, it's, I mean, I know that the Guardian specifically changed it so that they always say actor for everyone instead of saying actress or actor. But then there are certain people like I know Denise Goff. Yeah. Is really, like, uh-huh. Yeah. Her Twitter bio is basically like actress. actress. Actress, yeah. lots of aces. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because obviously you have a completely different experience of the industry being a female actor than you do as a male actor. So to define yourself as actress, yeah, I feel like, like many people want to reclaiming do reclaiming the specificity of like my job is becomes gendered because of the roles that I get given or the problems that you face. Mm-hmm. I guess. Mm. But then I'm like, well, I'm definitely an actor because I play roles of all genders. <laughs> and I want to be up for roles of any gender. Oh, that's a good point. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Self-definition over, kind of. Always progressing. So Katie and Kai star in the brand new ITV drama, Strangers, which is... We're recording on a Monday, so it's actually on tonight, so I can't yeah. wait for tonight. Oh my God. We haven't seen it either. No. Because we saw episode one, so we kind of had an idea of, you know, what was coming. and um, But I haven't seen any of it too, so... <gasps> when is this coming out? Well. Um, <clears throat> it will be this week. <laughs> when? Stay tuned. editing it. Yeah. <laughs> Did you meet working on Strangers? Uh... Had I met you before, Strangers? So we met at a workshop. Oh, yeah, of course. That, right? Snow in Midsummer. No, 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 something. Wait, no, no, no. Another Asian you... play. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> wait, which play? Snow in Midsummer at which uh, Kate Rose did. Shakespeare. Oh, Company. thanks, yes. Uh, yes. yes. So yes. we did a workshop together. I did a workshop. I was covering it ch- for a child because she oh. was at school. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, but you're amazing as a child. Oh, thank you so much. You're very good, very good. Very good. Much. <laughs> you see, I'm very famous for being called to, like, do random shit at workshops. So I've played a bird, a chastity bird, a child. What's a chastity kind of bird? RSC don't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was a very interesting workshop. But that's we met doing the um, snow and midsummers. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, But we didn't talk much, did we? No, we didn't. We did like my nemesis. Shut no, up! I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, 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 no. But no, no. yeah, it happens as well, I guess. But um. 
We didn't talk that much. That was weird. No, we we kind of like uh, during lunch break we went to the park and we all sat and listened to Hamilton. Yeah. It's very oh, um, but, but it was very mannered. Yeah, a little bit. I got you see like I haven't really been exposed to the, working with that many Asian actors at that time, so I remember being very very. Um, I don't know. Like I think I wanted to be liked a lot. And uh, and it's quite intense. What? Just I don't know. I felt like really intense because yeah. I guess we all share this kind of thing. Anger. I don't know. If, yeah, I found it very overwhelming. Actually, mm. Mm. it's so I'm funny because like I because every play that I have done, I've worked with East Asian actors. So I was kind of used to that. Yeah, it's your family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what it was. It's a very small family. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, it was quite intimidating to step in there. Katie the Queen. What? (laughs) The Queen of Asian plays, Asian (laughs) plays. I was like, please let me in. (laughs) That reminds me of when when you met Dan in New York. And he was like, are you an actor? Why don't I know who you are? He didn't know me and he was instantly like, I should know you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He needs to know everything. An East Asian woman I don't know in the (laughs) What? (laughs) Yeah, that's quite funny. Oh, God. I hope he doesn't listen to this. (laughs) He will. He He knows you now, though. Yeah. Hi, Daniel. Yeah. Um, Actually, that... that, uh, Am I going to bring up... I just... That's reminded me, Katie, that actually we've kind of met before. Because oh, no. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. Um, like I loved it. I was uh, when I was at uni. <laughs> yeah. I was doing extras work, and I played um, your stand-in in Run. <gasps> I love that show. Yeah, like it was like it was literally like a day. You were fil- I think it was basically like a time management thing. Like you were filming a scene, and I did like a drive. I was basically in a car with another actor, and we just drove, and that was the scene. But I got to made up to look exactly like you. Wow. And then you were there, but I was so intimidated on the day because I hadn't really done any, I hadn't been on a set before, right. I don't think, that I like obviously didn't say hi to you. But, oh, that's um, amazing. But I was like, yeah, I was like, wow, actually, we've, we've, our paths have crossed before. Mm. And I um, watched that the other day. Did you? I was like, got to do some research. <laughs> I'm not in it. Like, you can't <laughs> see it. <laughs> right, this is, here is this person. And uh, no, I did because I paused it on the scene where the dri- car was because you said I was in the car with the guy and yeah. I, I, the car was driving past and there was like a blur as the car drove past and I paused it and that's I was like me. that's definitely Pippa that's definitely Pippa really? I didn't when I tried to watch it I was like yeah obviously you can't tell it's me well it's because the car's driving really quick anyway well that's how well the world Congrats is right exactly that's exactly that. does that pass the uh, Dightful Toast run uh, yeah because yeah, you talked to Tina yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, nice yeah. yeah so I'm kind of obsessed with that now no and you speak <laughs> correct to yeah. to Olivia Coleman right yeah uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so the first episode passed the Bechdel test, but only because of the scene with you and Olivia really? Colman. Really? Yeah. Um, that show was quite refreshing at the time, I remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's quite diverse, and it was kind of... It was interesting. We didn't have shows like that at the time. Yeah. When was it, like five years ago? 2013. Yeah. yeah. For anyone listening who doesn't remember. <laughs> for British TV, it was, was like, ooh. Channel 4, uh, and it is still on 4 and D. Is it? Yeah, because oh, I, I watched it the other day. Oh. So you two met on this show, Strangers. Mm. Brand new. Brand new. So, so far at the time of this recording, we've only seen one episode. And you've only seen one episode. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. I thought you well. s- you've seen two. No. Mm. One. I saw it with you. Did you get like a showing? In the editing room. Um, oh. Yes, we did in the um, editing suite. Oh. With the director and the producer. And the BFI screening. Oh yeah, that's mm. right. Oh, uh-huh, sorry. But the first time we watched it and it... Has it changed? Well, yeah, it has it's changed, changed so a lot. Still, still it was before like grading and everything. Yeah, yeah, because you only, you saw it after uh, it came out. Yeah. after it was released. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, have you not watched it since it's been released? I watched it this morning. Ah, oh, yeah. does it feel different? Um, Kai and I were just having this conversation on the way here. Um, it's difficult because since it's been out, you know. There's obviously been people have been talking about it, discussing their views and their thoughts, and you can't help but now s- s- watch it with those kind of views in mind. You know, other people's kind of, of course, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. So it is different from when I saw it, um, the first and second time. Yeah, I don't know. I'm still. I think it's good. How long ago was it that you actually filmed it? That you actually made it? 
So we went out to Hong Kong last October and wow. we were there for two months yeah. uh, up until Christmas and then we we came back and shot the rest in, where did we shoot it? Ealing. Ealing, Ealing. Oh. Yeah. But it didn't really wrap till March, March. April. Yeah, oh, so wow. it's eight episodes, so, so it's, it's quite like a big a one. five, six month shoot. Wow. Such a long process. Mm. Yeah. And then process in between finishing filming it and mm. doing other stuff thinking about other stuff and then coming <laughs> yeah, back to yeah, it and, and then having to talk about it you know, a year later yeah and I was like I've forgotten what we did or yeah. what the story is especially because it's eight episodes so yeah. and it's a really kind of complex narrative and you don't want to give it away yeah uh-huh. yeah because there's so much even within like the first episode especially maybe also things like establishing your character mm. and the relationship to the protagonist like there's so many things that you're like, oh, I, can't, I actually can't really talk about that because that's a spoiler. Yeah. Um, mm. But I think in the end, I just had to, to give it away because otherwise, what are you there was say? no reason for me <laughs> yeah. to be there. I'm just a yeah. young girl yeah. in Hong Kong. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm just a local who lives there. We'll and like, if the series yeah. has been on for a couple of weeks and people haven't seen the first episode yet, then like, you know. Yeah. There is a, there is, I think there's a, there's an amount of time that you can be careful about spoilers before you have to stop being like, everyone, everyone, you know, you yeah. know you're going to get spoilers before you watch it. Yeah. yeah, but now everyone has to watch it because of the storm in Hong Kong. Of course, yeah. Mm. Uh, wait, it's, it's really bad. bad, isn't it? It's bad. It's yeah, I saw some videos, bad. yeah. It's horrific. One of the massive cranes were falling down and... The street. Kong. Yeah. Yeah. It does have some an amazing even in the first episode, just amazing shots of Hong Kong and the streets. Mm. Yeah. You get a real feeling of atmosphere there. So as far as I know, Katie, you go to Hong Kong quite regularly, right? Yeah, yeah that's right. Kong well I home. hadn't been back for a while. Um so the last time I went before Strangers was when I was shooting another uh, BBC series called One Child. Oh yeah. yeah. And that was quite uh yeah, it was quite a traumatic experience doing that. Um, mm. So I just needed a quite. I, I needed a break from Hong Kong, uh, so it, it was like it was perfect timing, mm. you know, when strangers came about and. Nice oh, so to get the work. Since. No, I hadn't. So oh. that was about what four years. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. So because I, I spent when I did one child, I spent two months out there in the summer, and it, mm. yeah, it just got a bit. Uh, I was just a bit overwhelmed by, the the shoot and. Because it's so overcrowded, especially you know, when it's thirty degrees and you're trying to get for me to be. It's, mm. I can't yeah. imagine living there, let alone trying to schedule a shoot. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. Um, but no, it, it was just a it was a very different Hong Kong when I went back to shoot Strangers in um, four years. Yeah. Uh huh. I mean, uh, just in terms of like who I was and sure. you know, because the city is always changing as well. So yeah. I had, a, I had a really good time. Um, yeah, well, really we all fun. did. We all did. It was, yeah, it was such a fun shoot. Had you been to Hong Kong before, Kai? Yeah, so I lived there when I was a kid for about two years. Oh. Yeah, before coming to England. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I loved it. I've only been once. My mum's from Hong Kong, but I've mm. only oh. been one time. And I was quite young. And I keep asking him, like, well, we should go back. And she's she she didn't personally didn't really like living there. She moved over when she was a teenager. Mm. Um, but I I would love to go back. But I don't speak Cantonese, so I feel like I'd I, I might struggle to get by. You actually well, would you'd be alright. Right. Really? Yeah. Okay. okay. It's not like Japan, where a uh, well, not the whole of Japan, but you know. Yeah, it's way more cosmo- cosmopolitan, isn't it? Yeah, uh-huh, because it's of changing. like british colonialism like it's you know you've got the signs you've got everything in english really yeah uh-huh. what do you look forward to whenever you go back um i would have like before i would have said the food because mm. you know it's the food there is just incredible um, there's really no comparison um but since becoming vegetarian last year oh. like i've had to kind of change you know, the way I eat and, like, what I eat as well. So this time going back was mm. slightly more difficult. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm vegan, so I worry about... Right. Yeah, I worry what my diet would be like going there. Yeah. Um, I mean, it would be very healthy because, like, you know, they've got yeah. all the veg and stuff. But out with that, I don't think everything's so... It is really meat-heavy. Mm-hmm. So you might struggle, but... Yeah, that's my perception of it. Yeah. 
But that's not a reason not to be there. No. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, I would really love to, especially watching Strangers. I was like, oh, I really want to go. Um, have you seen Hot Gay Time Machine? No. Because we were going, we were going to see it in Edinburgh, and then we didn't get round to it because. But we know that they talk about the Bechdel. Yeah, they do something with they the Bechdel like test, test in it. It's really yeah. Good. Um, what is it? Well, I don't know. Don't I can't remember it, that but tell us. Of it, but they talk about um, gay guys not treating. They they speak about about gay guys. Um, objectifying girls. Mm. Oh yeah, mm. very interesting. Just like the continuous yeah. sexism thing. It's like just because you're gay, you still can't. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. There is like an internalized really misogyny, I think. Yeah, that, yeah, we all have. But there's a like, lot of that in theatre, though. There's super interesting. Gay men who will grab your boobs. Oh yeah. No, I was bullied your... by a gay theatre director. He really? is known for like belittling the lead actress. Oh. Like it's cool, you know. They're like, "Oh, it's because you're," and you're like, "Oh, oh so that's okay." That's it's, it was okay. kind of weird how all the girls were like, "Yeah, this will happen to you," mm. and it was oh. a thing. It's very strange. God, that's mm. horrible. Yeah, yeah, it's really horrible. As if it's yeah. Like, Reminds me of when the way people used to talk about Kevin Spacey, like because I didn't hear about any of the stuff, like the stuff with men, really, because I was mainly talking to women that he'd worked with and who had just been like, oh yeah, he like wouldn't even, like didn't want to look at any of the women, was just like so focused on the men in the room that like it was kind of weird. And they were like, it's kind of misogynistic, but like he's a gay man, so I don't really understand like what was going on there, that whole vibe. And I was like, and then when all that stuff came out, I was like, well, yeah, that makes sense. Mm. Just an asshole. Mm. <laughs> just an yeah. arse. Yeah. Yeah, but it was yeah, really tricky though because nasty piece of work. Yeah, because when I was working with the guys, all the guys felt like they couldn't say anything because they didn't know <gasps> what was going on, and obviously they were kind of being flirted at. They were sort of being like tamed, and um, yeah, it's very odd. Mm. It's a power thing. It's just the power. Yeah. 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 None of us quite know. Like of either gender especially or any mm. gender like neither, it's hard to know what to do when something is so blatant or so obvious and you feel so vulnerable especially in a work environment yes um, and so framed as a joke as well like yeah. mm, it's okay it's cool you'll be like uptight if you say anything or do anything mm. yuck I'm sorry that happened to you mm. I don't know but it's hard isn't it well this uh, I'm like old as fuck so now I feel like sure. I can just talk about some stuff <laughs> but you know like back then yeah. well I'm still young and I'm still naive and I'm still we're just so vulnerable as actors you know because you want everything to be great and fun and you know that's why you do it and then so you're kind of like out there and you, at the time I didn't quite realize what was going on mm. you know now in reflection I can go oh no that was bullying and the fact that I felt like I was gonna get fired every day even though my opposite partner who was a guy had like a completely different treatment is a thing and yeah it must be interesting as well in terms of the different kind of work you can do as an actor maybe in like tv film and also theater because theater you're kind of doing an ongoing job and your mm. relationships are kind of i don't know uh, different but if you're doing TV and film where you're on such a tight schedule in terms of like getting things done on time and like this is your one day to shoot this one scene the kind of like added pressure of feeling like oh I, well I'll just work I'll just do the job I'll work and then I'll I think it know. can be like that with theatre as well like yeah. doing a rehearsal schedule and if you're you know in the same way that you can you can be away on like a tour or in a theatre that's not in your yeah if anything it's even more intense because your... there's less um, um, pampering there's no budget for pampering, so yeah. just like you were literally in shit in the rehearsal space. Oh, this show wouldn't have passed the Bechtel test. Mm -hmm. So okay. that, thinking back, you're like, oh, because I didn't have any fellow females around me oh. to tell me what was going on. They were there, but they were like, they weren't in any of my scenes. Mm. Um, it's hard, isn't it? It's when really you're interesting. Literally isolated. Yeah, we were. Where were we talking about? I can't remember. We we're having a conversation with some other theatre makers or something recently about also about the power and status you feel you have um depending on if you're an actor on the part you're playing in a production so yes. say you're playing like a minor role 
you don't feel like you can go into the healthy room and call out bullshit or you know abuse yeah. or anything because oh I'm just this minor character like I don't walk into the room with a certain level of status whereas if I was a protagonist yeah. then you would feel yeah. that way so it's and like, even if your character is like a, a large role if your character is playing somebody who is either victimized or they're you know they're taking like a lower power stance even if you're you have a lot of lines it's still maybe can necessarily mean that you don't feel like you can speak up. Mm. Yeah, and subconsciously, your relationship within the story bleeds into your relationship mm. within the cast and all that kind of stuff. Mm. That's where we love this. Yeah. But, um, okay, it's weird. weird. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, with, like, it's funny, because with Strangers, oh. um, you know, we got on really well with Paul, the director, and he, it was just the way the way that he his his process just kind of like really worked with you know how I work as well so we got to know each other way before we started shooting and and therefore when it came to um scenes that we did um I felt like I could say to him if I felt you know uncomfortable about anything and he was like really open to that and I find like it made me realize just how rare that was like that kind of relationship you can have with the director because so often it's all about um you know there's a a hierarchy involved um and i'd say probably more with kind of screen stuff than theater i mean Mm -hmm. in my experience anyway Mm -hmm. Um, but do you think that's because of like more experience like my boyfriend's an actor as well and we always talk about this kind of thing whether it's me or it's them yeah, or yeah, yeah. who is responsible for creating that space for you yeah you know uh-huh. and it's do you think it's because you've done more and maybe I don't know it is a combination you know? of it's everything hard. like age experience yeah. um, and maybe like you've got a good cast and you felt supported you totally, know uh-huh. like a combination yeah. of lots of stuff mm-hmm. yeah and Paul I'm sure he was very easy and yeah. approachable uh-huh. he should go and tell how he works to other male directors so that mm. Everyone mm. learns. <laughs> yeah. But then it was still yeah. very individual, you know. It's very subjective. I, I, yeah, yeah, I find, like, him really easy to work with, but, um, mm. you know, someone else might not. So, it's, yeah. And so, do we have more scenes between you two that we can look forward to? I year? mean, I am yeah. literally, like, supporting. But, yeah, you, get, you see lots of Katie. No. I got very excited when the prison scene happened. Because I mean, no, there's a lot more of that. Lots of tat. There's a lot lots of colourful yeah, hair. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I get excited. I, like that. When I, when I watched this morning, I mm. was just um, yeah, I was really excited about our scene. I always like. I always look forward to that scene, even though I've seen it like probably like four or five times now. Mm. Um, because it oh, passes the Bechdel test so well. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. why. Yeah. Really yeah. interesting. And you're great characters. Right. You're both activists, and it's kind of yeah. But a lot of people were saying that even our um, colleague Jay Jay Wong, who's in it, Jason Wong. Sorry, is it Wong? Jay, yeah, Jason Wong. Oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is that Jason Wong? Is that your dad in it? No, no, no. Jason Anthony. Wong plays. Oh, Anthony um, is your dad. He plays he like a, a gangster, a triad. Anyway, he yeah. he <laughs> literally said. Just getting who you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> he was saying, "Oh my God, this is the first time he was." shocked himself he was like this is so rare I've, um, oh my god so yeah so especially for british tv two yeah. female actress two female activists yeah. in a scene together yeah and being what? two east asian actors yeah. yeah what do you guys think about um this might be controversial no same. so the whole movement of people now i find that in my perspective Maybe it's my agent. I don't know. Mm. But I am coming across... I think in order to pass the Bechdel test, mm. they're having way more female gay relationships on shows. Mm. Have you noticed that? That's so interesting. I don't know if there are more or But less that's probably my or... perspective. But I was like, is or that is how it they do that? Like, just that it's a huge aspect of life that's been un- so underrepresented completely completely but it's not about the relationship it just is sometimes mm-hmm. they just kind of flip it I've, mm-hmm. I've had a lot of things where it was initially a male and then they just flipped it and they were like okay they're 
and it's completely fine but how do you um and that's like we saw a play where it had been yeah. written as a man and a woman couple mm. and they were like oh let's let's change it so that mm. it's two women in a relationship do you remember that like company has what done that as that? well i can't remember what it's called but i just oh, remember the, the lobster yeah yeah so it was, it was a, a writer or director no, no. Oh. it was a play it was a um you were on the panel yeah. afterwards and it they, the writer said was it the writer who said we had originally written it as a male and a female relationship right. and then we just switched it and that's the play that you see and now it's become like a LGBTQ representation project. I personally find it a bit of a line between um I, I feel like when writing queer characters, I personally feel, mm. I mean, as a queer person, like, mm. I feel like I want there to be, like, thought and care put into it, as opposed to just a choice of just, like, flipping things. Mm -hmm. But also, I want it to be as simple as, look, you can flip the gender and it still be in a, a like, it's still, just a it relationship still as a relationship. can resonate as, yeah. a, as a relationship. So I, I mm. personally find myself kind of flitting between those two kind of things of, like, but I'd, I'd like the intention for queer characters to be written. But equally, yeah, I want it should be you should be able to have similar narratives of straight yeah. or heteronormative like relationships and be able to kind of flip it and it be just as accessible. Um, it's an interesting time, isn't it? Mm. Where people are just flipping things all the time, and sometimes it feels too insensitive. Sometimes it's good, and you you don't want to mm. discourage it, but at the same time, it's like oh whoa. Um, Oh no, that was but a really good point. It's my perspective. Yeah. 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 Um, Have you been offered lots of like? Are you, are you talking from experience of like scripts that you've seen that are you're seeing? Yeah. Being offered <laughs> lots of gay parts. Or is it like maybe from a viewer's perspective? Um. Um. Just I don't suddenly know. piling no, up. They're on literally like way more the interesting but yeah. because they were kind of originally. I don't know. No, I totally know what you mean, because I did a workshop yeah. recently. Don't. I don't know if I'm allowed to mention the name, because um, it's still in development, mm -hmm. and okay. the whole point of why they're doing it is because originally the, the two protagonists were male, and now they've swapped it in their female, mm. and it's it's just made it so much more interesting. So is it like a remake, um, or is it like an original script that they've just changed? To? Uh, an, or, an original. Yeah, right, so yeah. all the words are the same, apart from, you know, the... Okay. Um, but are they lovers? No. Um, that c that's kind of, it's not, it's not confirmed in the script, so it could it could mm. be that they are or they're not. Mm. Um, but regardless, it's just it was really interesting to to be able to be involved in that workshop and to see whether it would work, and it absolutely does. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't. It doesn't dwell on their gender. It's just part of exactly. The story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Which is. Really but I would nice. like. It would be nice if it is written specifically. You know, like um, like for example, like inter. You know, like when you have, um, friends who are diverse, right? Yeah. In a show like Fresh Me and stuff. Let's talk about it. I have a huge problem where. Um, oh, just know, make just make that character non-white. Yeah, non-white. But then they don't <laughs> talk about it. It's like. No, we all talk about it. We're all very aware that we're all very different and we we offer different things in the room. And yeah, yeah, yeah. and when it's not in the script, you just know that, oh, it wasn't, you weren't writing it specifically. You weren't writing it considering this combination, you know? some Sometimes I'm a bit, yeah. And that's probably because it's just like generations of just the same stuff and they're still trying to produce it and, and things are changing. And it's it's that sinking of the writing and the... Yeah, because there's a lot of great talent. Talent is there. It's just having the right platform and the dialogue and the, you know, like transparent is amazing. Killing Eve is amazing. It's about two I women. Watched it. You know, is it it's out? yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. BBC Three. It's on BBC right? Three. Oh, okay. It's so online. exciting. Like women yeah. are so interesting. Yeah. You know, we're not just we don't just kiss or we don't just look hot or, you know, and Killing Eve is like a perfect example of how. Women are fucking great, you know, yeah. we're like complex. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm kind of searching for, you know, it's, um, I don't know. Do you find that there's <laughs> any kind of roles that you maybe don't see yourself getting scripts or getting auditions to that you're kind of like, oh, maybe 
you know, maybe my white counterparts get this or maybe like a different typecast gets this? And like, is there any kind of roles that you kind of feel like, oh, I'd really love to have the chance to play that kind of woman or have that kind of experience, but like for whatever reason you might, you might haven't so far? There's just so much that I want to do and play and there's not really anything specific. I just, you know. Just want more of everything. Yeah, I mean, it's, my expectations are really fucking low at the moment and I still. Stop it, what do you mean? Well, I just mean as in, if I could have a line. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, man. I mean, that's the way for most actors, is that? I just want a job. (laughs) Can I just get a job? (laughs) That's how I felt at the beginning about the whole actor, actress thing. I was like, I just want to be an actor. It's really hard. Like, I just, I want to be able to play a part that doesn't, um, like, it's, it's, I I don't want to deny my heritage or my culture. Mm. But at the same time, like, I feel like we need to kind of, um, just I don't know what the word is but I guess reach a place where people are not stereotyping me mm-hmm. and then kind of go back to somewhere that I really want to be like what I want to create and do um, yeah I mean for example like Kai and I have been up for a couple of parts recently um, are we going to talk about we're it? we're going to fucking talk about <laughs> it Kai yes. it happened <laughs> But uh, this happened. This happened, but there is a script, and you know the the part was written for an East Asian. The name was the East Asian. The name was East Asian. Um, we both went up for it, and and then we discovered it's now been given to a, a white woman, um, and that's frustrating. They changed the character. To be white, or it was a white woman playing an East Asian character. Yeah, so they've they just they've cast give, they've cast the actor. So it was whitewashed. What? As mm. white now. So you really yeah. think that given? But I think the it happens a lot. Yeah. But obviously, mm. seeing it firsthand in the script that you've read, there's a lot of things we don't know as actors. I think, but then because mm. it was. Yeah, you, you think that was the first time? I'm sure it happened a lot, right? It happens all the time, I'm sure. It's just... We just don't keep track of it. Yeah, it's just when you find out, it's... Especially at this time, you know? Mm-hmm. But then you can't really say anything because it's not like a Marvel film. It's not like a Marvel... Like an existing story. Mm. So, so where do you draw the line? You, you know, can't where... prove it. Like, no, we can't prove yeah, it. You yeah, can't... Yeah, yeah. Well, you can. But then where do you... How do you stop that? Yeah. It's clearly, you, you just feel, as a POC actor, you just feel like, oh, you didn't trust us enough. Mm-hmm. You know, you just, it, it's very, very painful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. And uh, pain and anger is, doesn't work well for me. <laughs> <laughs> well it's it's just a, like a huge extra thing to have to carry into a room when you're going for a casting like that i can kind of like it's it's horrible the stuff that you already have to think about oh what are these people behind the table judging me on without like that extra thing being a possibility of oh are they gonna just completely change this role so they can put a white person in it yeah yeah, because you start off with like the one-liners, right? And you're like trying to be, it's like, oh yeah, I can do it. I can be like you guys. And then you sort of go, okay, cool, cool, cool. You are in it. You know? And then you suddenly get a part that's equivalent to a white character. And then you're just as, you know, important within the storyline. And then they just whitewash you. And you're like, oh, oh, so the ladder didn't exist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you're just, mm-hmm. just being hung for no reason. Mm. It feels sometimes. Obviously, we have been very lucky, and I am very yeah. grateful for all the amazing stuff we've done. But it just doesn't help because I believe that you know, there's, there's, um, it's a river, right? It's like there's more than us. It has to carry on. So if if we can't break these barriers, I feel like very helpless sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm. I just don't know what to do. Mm. So we have our wine sesh <laughs> um, so do, have, do you find the there's like a nice community that you're finding i know how you say that you haven't worked so much with east asian actors before but i mean find 
from what I see, the ripple, um, that kind of like the British East Asian artists community is supportive and everyone kind of knows each other through like one degree of separation, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as we realised earlier. Um, do you find that really helpful, especially maybe as a woman, especially maybe as a woman of colour, to kind of have those communities or is it actually quite hard to navigate? I've... I've been really lucky, you know, all the kind of productions I've done um, where there has been an involvement of British, British East Asian actors, um, there has been a real sense of community and everybody's really supportive and it's just really nice to talk about, you know, what we're talking about right now, um, just knowing that you're not alone um, when you're having kind of mm. these experiences um so yeah it's just and I, I don't know like like we were talk, talking about earlier it is a combination of things coming together you know i it, it it could just be that you know like-minded people are together it could be just because um we're all we all happen to be very open and all the rest and I, I, but i think it is more than more than that you know I think it is to do with us kind of going through the same shit and being able to talk about it to each other and um, yeah I'm really I'm really grateful for it and I'm, I just want that to continue and for us to be able to like bolster each other so that we can be vocal about these kind of mm -hmm. injustices that are happening. Mm -hmm. It us. feels like counselling, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? It is hard though sometimes, right? Because it's it's so intense for us. Yeah, there's so much pressure. And there's so much pressure and it's a very small chance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially with like a community of people that are so hungry to work. Yeah. I can imagine it feels like a lot of pressure when you do work and you're like, oh, I've got to, you know live up to this pressure that everyone puts on me in terms of representation in terms of the work job i do you know so many things mm -hmm. well sometimes it's quite stressful to feel like we have to prove to them that we're or they we are just as good mm -hmm. um that's quite exhausting mm -hmm. yeah like for example i went to see crazy rich asians with my family my little brother who's 16 and he was like a little bit guard he was you know, he was telling me stories about him, you know, all his mates at boarding school kind of like teasing him about, you know, it's just another Black Panther moment or, you know, all that kind of mm. loose, kind of very insensitive chat, right, that boys who are not POC talk about mm. sometimes. And um, so that's exhausting to have to feel like you have to defend just because you're of the same colour. You know, it should be just any other show and everyone should have their own opinion and it should be cool. But I find that weight quite difficult to handle. Mm -hmm. You know, having to defend all the time. Yeah, and I think also, mm -hmm. like, um, it's it's quite... It's so difficult when you're part of, like, an underrepresented group that every part that you play has... There are so many different kind of tropes and stereotypes that, like script writers and uh, whoever else is involved in creating a character that isn't the actor mm -hmm. had plays a part in that sometimes it's not but it feels like it falls on the shoulders of the actor to be the representation yes, despite exactly. the fact that the actor isn't the only person involved in creating the role so if you've got a role that somebody says is um you know not not well-rounded enough or stereotypical or whatever it is it's all eyes turn on the actor to sort of make that better and it's yeah. like well actually someone else has written it someone else has made the costume somebody else has like directed it you know somebody else has edited it so that it looks that way it's it's not all about the actor's choice to make that character yeah, this, you know? yeah well sometimes and you like, just need to live you just have like, to take you need the job it's jobs it's work it's yeah. your taking job and who hasn't done jobs that aren't exactly representative of all of our multitudes you know mm -hmm. um I had a girl who I went to college with, a performing arts college, when I was 16. And I hadn't seen her for like 10 years. And after a show, I think one of the shows, I think we went to see, I was at Yellow Face or something, right? I went, I was on my own and I just sat there and I saw her. 
and she literally went I was like oh my god and then you know as you do you're very very excited to see someone you haven't seen for a while mm. and then she literally went she's also an actor an Asian actor and Tris female and then she literally went up to me and she said the first thing she said was what is it like to play um um what is it like to be in a racist show <gasps> I know I was like girl I'm working Oh, <laughs> yeah uh it was hard oh, that kind of shit so like um and that kind of thing s- stays with you yeah. especially if you're were you in yellow face i wasn't oh. so i was watching it sorry so oh. it was after the show i was in right, sorry right, okay. bad context but um yeah so there's a lot of kind of like um throwing responsibility lots of um I mean, it's tiny compared to this. This is great, but that happens a lot. It's so complex, isn't it? It's yeah. so never-ending that you're so just never constantly ending. relearning and thinking about yeah. things differently and then thinking, what are the choices that I can make? What are the choices I need to make? Yeah, because I'm thinking yeah. about all the times that we've seen, we, that we've kind of been as Bechdel Theatre, like, we're very rarely critical of anything because our job is to champion all the stuff mm, that is great yeah. but sometimes we do take a role of being like well this character seems like an archetypal stereotype mm. and then going oh I really feel for the actor that's playing that role mm. because uh, like you want them to know that it's not necessarily a criticism of their work but at the same time it's a criti- it's literally a criticism of their work <laughs> 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 but like it's not it's not being aimed control. at them yeah, yeah. exactly it's yeah. really hard when you're in there it's a top level down thing like it's kind of like the industry needs to change and so we need to have those conversations but it needs to like not be targeted at the mm. you know necessarily at like and I feel like that's why most actors don't speak up because they feel targeted mm. yeah. they're very aware but as soon as yeah you start getting involved politically I feel like yeah the responsibility mm. right and that your image is so out there and so associated with the roles that you've played in a way that maybe a director or a scriptwriter, they're, I don't know, they're, they might not be as, as held, like, held up as a mm. role model or a, as a mm. supposed to be kind of perfect mm. all the time. Especially with the layers of being a woman, being East Asian, you know, I think there's a lot of kind of added layers in terms of like how much freedom you feel like you have or what you're doing with what you say mm. um something that i noticed did you did you go to the um there was the uh have you heard of beats they're like a, they're launching a new thing it's i yeah. know i think daniel's involved in it but um i i was just seeing on facebook and stuff about um they they launched with like this screening of crazy rich asians yeah, crazy rich. and i believe it's you know beats as in british east asian television stage artists oh, st- yeah stage television screen, screen stage artists they i mean i went on their website it's like brand new but they're like launching themselves as a kind of i guess kind of like a campaign of like people who are filmmakers actors you know whoever Um, they kind of have like three main aims but it's kind of to you know really humanize the representation we see of East Asian Mm. actors and characters and advocate for visibility advocate for the the use of the term British East Asian as well because often it um, is just a group of people that get lumped under like Asian which in British culture can often really mean South Asian um, or Mm. just you know POC or BAME And so it feels kind of like, I really hate the idea of current climates and like, you know, today things are so changing. But I do think there's like a truth to kind of movements, kind of like moving things on and like creating paths for new things. And it's nice that there's something like, you know, a big film like Crazy Rich Asians. And then there's this grassroots movement such as Beats coming forward, you know, demanding to be like taking up more space and things like that. So... But it's still an American show, though, isn't it? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And we've had this conversation. Yeah. Very different. Asian Americans and British Asians. Yeah. Is yeah, so... yeah. Yeah, we want the British version. How often <laughs> do you guys get to use your own accents in your jobs? Interesting. Never. Thought you never use your Scottish? Never. 
Hardly. I mean, apart from theatre shows. Ah. Like, where? Um, yeah. Uh huh. Mm. Why is that, do you think? No, even, even when I audition for. Um, yeah, even now, you would think. But no, I, I haven't. Like, apart from Harry Potter, which was when I was oh, 16, yeah. but you know, it's still race specific. And in fact, like, all the kind of parts on stage have still been race specific. Mm. Um, so it kind of doesn't count, really. Mm. Yeah, because, you know, I mean? you know, you're playing a Chinese character in China, yeah. for instance. Or, uh-huh. Mm. Um, so, no, I, you know, when we were talking about what kind of part I'd like to play, when I say I've got low expectations, that is what I mean. Like, I do want to play a part where I just speak in a Scottish accent. And I did a workshop recently, mm. um, a theatre workshop uh, with just David Gregg writing a new play. Um, and I was just sat in the room with um, three other Scottish actors. And it was fucking amazing. It was incredible. Yeah. It just kind of like... I don't know, I accessed like a part of my brain that I hadn't used before or I, d- I rarely use and I, I, it just made me realise how deprived I was of a, a part of me um, that I don't get to use when I'm putting on an accent. Um, I was kind of sad in Strangers when they were like, when it was like, why have you got the British accent? And I was like, yeah, British accent, but not your lovely Scottish accent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's so cool. Yeah, well, actually, it's like, if... But if you can explain, yeah. like, you know, away any accent. Like, there's so many actors that have really specific accents that you just, either the, uh, you just don't question it, or you just put some line in the story. Like, I always joke about John claude Van Damme always having a line in his films that explain the fact that he's got a Belgian accent, because, you know, every character that he has has a Belgian accent. And they, they, they just yeah. put something in that says, oh, I grew up in French Canada, or, like, some something to say, oh, this is why I have an accent, and that's it. Like... Uh-huh. Or you just don't mention that the character has a different accent to the parent, and you, your brain just deals with it. Yeah, like yeah, people yeah. aren't just get over it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's just so it. boring as well. It's such a boring line to have to explain. Yeah. You know, it's like wasted. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was um. better than the um, <laughs> the original intention, which was to have her speak in a Chinese accent. Um, oh, okay. So when <laughs> your that, face and then, just, I just kind of like refuse to do so <laughs> like, no I'm doing yeah. English and that's my life yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good yeah uh, oh how interesting mm-hmm. yeah what are your mm-hmm. thoughts on the accent stuff because what is it Jimmy O. Yang who's in Crazy Rich Asians the comedian guy mm-hmm. I think he's great but he naturally has an accent because he's right. from Hong Kong yeah, and he talks fine. about how yeah there was a couple of conversations about accents and stuff mm-hmm. yeah and I remember Constance mm-hmm. we were talking yeah. about not denying yeah. you know, the accent of your your parents mm. or your grandparents, and I totally agree with that. But we need to get to a stage first where we're not being stereotyped before we can. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It shouldn't just be that. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it's right like now, have that's that, what we are. but have others. You know, mm. it's fine to have that if there's yeah. like a multitude of other characters that have varying accents. But when it's mm. the only representation you see that is a heavily accented yeah. East Asian person, then it's not it's not a fair balance. So exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it shouldn't just be like the young people, because like we're yeah. gonna get old, and I don't want to end up like speaking broken Asian accent, yeah, broken yeah. English, yeah. just because yeah. Hopefully we yeah. get old speaking like this. Yeah. In I mean, a character. I, yeah, I did. You know, I did that a ch- Chinese accent, whatever that means for yeah. for run, mm. and like it was it was cringe. It was cringe for me because I didn't really know what that was, so I was mm. just kind of making it up. And and whose gaze is that that creates that idea of like the accent as well? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It was. Yeah. It was. It was. It's just diff- It's just a difficult conversation that needs to be. And it's all depending on the context of everything as well, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, definitely. If it's like one in ten projects, would you do it? Well, depending on how depending. frequent, right? You can't yeah. make so a like, for it, really, can you? Because yeah, I feel exactly. like it's like, yeah, it's who it yeah. depends on it's everything, the, part. the story, yeah. the character. But when it's only that, that's when it gets really boring, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Mm. Especially like the character of, uh, of Lau in Strangers, where like the majority of people because um, she's supposed to have gone to international school in Hong Kong and mm. you know everyone speaks perfect English there mm. and, and 
Probably quite American. Yeah, 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 in an American accent. Um, So, but my character went to, like, a a British international school. Um, Like, it really matters. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's like, it's so so weird. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. that's just the characters. Like, people have different accents. Deal with it. I've got different accents from my mum and my dad. Like, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like, Uh not everything has to be... And accents are, like, not just one sound. Yeah. Like, my boyfriend was doing a, a, a play set in Norfolk, and he, there are, like, so many accents in that mm. area. Yeah, and not every Scottish person, is, you know, has a Scottish accent. Yeah. All sorts, yeah. So, whatever. Yeah, it yeah. seems so minuscule, you know, compared to everything we're talking about, but it's all part of it. Mm. Yeah. You know, just all the little things that add up. On a positive, mm. and about strength, and spoiler-wise, <laughs> Yeah. What are you allowed to say about the two of you's relationship and how it develops in the show and the plot? Because we're really curious. Hmm. <laughs> I think, like, it's, uh... Becky's a bit of an idiot. Becky? <laughs> no, she's not. What? Becky seems so sure of herself. Yeah. And, like, yeah. so cool. Yeah. yeah. You're showing her the ropes and showing her how she's we'll doing see. it now. Or that's the impression I've got so far. We'll see. I think it's, uh... Yeah, their their relationship's like super. It's lovely. solid. Yeah, especially with all the other stuff that's happening around them. But it's quite nice. I think it's like these two very lonely kind of young girls, you know, who like find themselves and then they sort of find a bond. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I made up. I can't like wait life. to see it. Yeah, <laughs> it feels like it might be like a little island of love, loveliness in quite a difficult world that they're in of like mm. challenges and being like. Mm. like this badass kind of political activist character like needs a friend were the crowd in hong kong like when you were filming were they interested in in terms of it being like maybe like a british production like is it going to air over there or are they kind of like oh we don't really care it's english um they're hard to know i don't know if it's is it airing over there um (sighs) but they were certainly interested when we were filming oh i mean but the chinese thing (laughs) <laughs> what <laughs> the simplified Chinese thing went on the ease oh, or something oh my goodness yeah that was so they must know about it they know about it now oh right right yeah. right, right. they so, fucked up yeah so oh. for the marketing of strangers um, like the thing that sets Hong Kong apart from China is like their well, one off is the um, the use of traditional characters uh, whereas in China they use simplified characters um, and for the marketing like for the posters and stuff they kind of make the mistake of using simplified which is really sensitive at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so and and I got, I was the one that got called out on it, and I'm like, I'm not in charge of the fucking market. <laughs> yes, like, yes. Like, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. yeah, actors getting Katie, criticized and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 With you? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And it's Jeez. really scary, yeah. right? Yeah. You turned up and did your job a year ago as an actor, and yet getting criticized for mm. something like that that's so far away from. Yeah. And women get it way more. Mm. Mm. It's weird. Definitely. Yeah. Are they criticising any of the male actors in the in Strangers for the use of simplified Chinese mm. characters? In Interesting. The no, because you're kind of like the spokesperson as well. Right. You know, like I often work <laughs> and they're like, "Oh my god, she," which is amazing. Like you, like ground, like Harry Potter is so massive, and it's kind of like it resonates around the world. But at the same time, I feel your responsibility. It's yeah. you know the kind of they almost like expect you to sort of. That must be weird. Not weird. I use bad it's words. It's hard yeah. to navigate. Yeah. Yeah. Massive. It is. I mean, I think I chose. Not chose, but I'm. You know, I'm. I'm super private and introverted, and I'm not. You know, I'm. I'm not like a public speaker in any way so like all that kind of stuff really overwhelms me but I think I've gotten to an age now where I realise that you know there are loads of kind of girls who have have to listen to what I want to say and and they and yeah I have a you know I've, I've got a responsibility to to use like my platform carefully um mm. So I can't, you know, especially now, I can't just sit back and let mm. people um, inform, like, 
who I am or whatever. So yeah. But well, I saw so I saw like a, a something on your Twitter recently where you were having like race. I think I reported them, but it was like <laughs> it was you and Kelly. Marie yeah, Chan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've just realised I've got my figurine of her. Oh, have you? <laughs> right there. Oh, yeah, my happy. girlfriend bought it for me when we right. saw Star Wars because she was like, she's fucking crazy. crazy. <laughs> yeah. um, but kind of like, especially like, yeah, being... Um, Wait, what happened? Well, you had... There was just like some racism that happened on Katie's Twitter. Oh, like, the Twitter. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, I mean, just like Kelly getting loads of slack. Mm. Yeah. Just um, in a part of the world. <laughs> it was insane. There was just no reason. Yeah. And there it is not just coincidence that people, you know, have such a hatred for for her character and my character. Oh, it just you know, it just mm. so happens that you're both Asian and female. Do you think though if an Asian male do you think an Asian male would get it the same? Or do you think it's a it's, I, I do you think it's different too? I don't know. Um I mean, I can only speak on, you know, from my experience on being on Potter, but, you know, a lot of the, I mean, I still have to contend with, like, a lot of shit on the internet these days. I mean, it's probably not as much as when I first got the part, but certainly, Mm -hmm. like, you know, um, just, I I think it's a lot to do with me playing the love interest. Mm. Oh, so when that so people turned against you? Yeah, 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 a lot, of, mm. and it was difficult because it was, it wasn't just girls who were fans of, of the franchise, but also, um, Asians across the pond who are like, you know, she's not a represent, she's not a, a representation of who we are, and so like, you know, you're getting, you're getting it from both sides. Mm. Uh, so that was that and that's was, so not in your hands as well like yeah, another <laughs> yeah, yeah it's just so super difficult um but then that's that mess just... you up because you're so calm <laughs> yeah i get neurotic about i don't know where to be yeah but then it's just like i don't know I, I think you just have to see it as a it's just the result of something much bigger you know it's systemic yeah. and i can't you know, you can't blame these little girls who are growing up who are being told that they have to compete against other girls and, you know, that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. So, um, if you look at it, you know, if you look at the bigger picture, it makes it a lot easier, I think, to deal with. Um, but then it makes you realise as well how much more there is that needs to be done. Yes, I can imagine. Yeah. 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 Um, no, but on the other hand, you've definitely been like a huge, even for me, the fact that you were in Potter. So, you know, despite all the hate, mm. there's lots of love as well. Oh, yeah, yeah totally. Like, yeah. Absolutely. There's so much love. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's really well, important love, you know? Yeah, yeah. I feel like for me growing up, or like, yeah, watching you in Potter when I was younger and stuff, I feel like. I could I could only root for you like you mm. know when you know your career path it's like of course like I, I couldn't find it within me to kind of you know find myself you know discriminating against you in any way like that you had such an important role and and you have had an amazing career since that it's like yeah I, I from my perspective I've only seen like love and stuff and I feel like that's such a like um that's where I, I want to put my energies in yeah, totally. You know, everyone's yeah. everyone's been super supportive. It's just the kind of like, you know, it is few and far between. Um, and it's just so human of us to to forget, you know, all the positives, and you mm. just remember that one negative. Of moment, course, you know what I mean. Of course. Yeah. yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. The amount that you know. Sometimes it's easier to feel numb to the kind of praise that you get because mm. it's harder to kind of really take that in yeah. um, but it's easy to remember that thing that might confirm your own insecurity or might kind of get to you in a personal way um, it's just dealing with other people's bullshit when you have so much bullshit of your own yeah, <laughs> yeah. do you know what I mean that I can't I can't <laughs> it's full <laughs> so I can only take it badly yeah, yeah. yeah. so feminist babes the 
uh, question that we ask all of our guests on the podcast is who do you have maybe in your life right now? It could be a person, could be a thing, could be a movement, an experience, could be anything basically, um, that kind of like inspires you in some way um, that you would love to spread the word about to our listeners. It doesn't have to be someone super niche, it could be someone, you know, very prominent, but... I'll let you think, because I've got one. <laughs> okay, go, yeah. okay, go, go. So, um, I know a lady called Pavana Mara, and she is the founder of uh, this charity called My Body Back Project. Um, so she started that up a couple of years ago, and it's a charity that uh, works with women who have experienced sexual violence. So they have clinics, they've got a clinic in Glasgow and one in London, um, and it just helps women to, you know, victims of sexual violence to, to recover a year after they experience, um, so, you know, psychologically, physically, um, and I'm hopefully, no, I'm not hopefully, I am, I'm doing a run for them. Um, so I, I recently became their ambassador and I'm doing a run either next month or the month after so either October or November to try and raise funds so you know they can spend it on you know equipment and actually paying the people who are helping these women because right now everybody's just kind of doing it off their own kind of back uh you know they've got they've got their own jobs and then after that they'll they'll go and go to these clinics and and help out and um yeah it's just so I, I only met Pavan last month for the first time, um, even though I've been in their ambassador for, I think, like over a year now, uh, because she's just been so busy and we hadn't, we didn't have time to meet up. Um, so yeah, just meeting her for the first time and being able to kind of share our experiences and to, to listen to why she set it up in the first place. It's because she had been through something similar and she didn't, she couldn't find a clinic to help her um so she was like well I, I need to set it up myself um amazing and, and so yeah yeah I know someone who got helped by that project that mm. needed to have a smear test and couldn't at a normal GP surgery because it's so like you go in you go out there's no support for anyone who w will find that you know a yeah and the waiting list is really long as well experience to mm -hmm. go through is like if you have a supportive environment if you have a special clinic that's geared towards yeah mm -hmm. anybody who needs it it's amazing mm -hmm. that's that's what i'm saying that's faith yeah. Yeah. what really help that charity gets is awesome how far is your run um 10k okay which is a real struggle for me because i'm a lazy fuck yeah so same. Long, i couldn't do it. <laughs> i couldn't yeah. do 10k yeah. yeah so i'm currently training amazing yeah. that's great yes. so, no that's so good please donate everybody yes yeah. where are cool. you running uh victoria park oh lovely oh nice so please don't come i'll come and watch <laughs> nice. i used to run there i used to live right by there i used to run down there it'll be nice yeah. though with the autumn leaves and stuff yeah. Really yeah no i'm really excited yeah it'll be worth it it'll be worth it Cool. Kai, do you have one? Well, mine is um, keeping it home. My fave is actually my mum. Yay. Me and my mum have a very uh, tumultuous... Is it tumultuous? I've never said that word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yes, I have. Um, relationship. But I think she's literally... Yeah, she's my hero. She's kind of like given me... We've had a very exciting life together. Um, she had a very exciting life before I was born and she's given me all the examples of, um, yeah, how the world is limitless. She's given me a great example no matter how, yeah. What's her name? Kim. Kim. Yeah, she's great. But she was raised by another great feminist who's my great grandma and she was a trooper as well. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. Runs in the family. And you guys. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Who's yours, Beth? Do you have one? I've got, you know, I've always got Four. so many. But I was thinking, actually, after watching Strangers, about Pussy Riot. Because mm. we went to see somebody from Pussy Riot mm. in Edinburgh doing, like, they do, like, a concert, but it's, like, a concert that's mixed with video documentary about their 
history and about the protests that they did that got them put in jail in 2012 and how they've sort of done various actions since then and they invaded the pitch at the World Cup to draw attention to kind of the all of the political situation the protests against the political situation in Russia and made me think a bit of that scene mm. in Strangers where you're like in prison but also like spraying stuff and kind of yeah. making those public outbursts and really kind of putting life on the line for a cause and made me think uh being in the same room as Pussy Riot at Edinburgh more than a lot of the theatre that we see made me think oh these are the real people that have been there and this is their actual experience and they put themselves out there and the woman that was in Edinburgh had crossed the borders like in a car that was trying to sneak because she was told that she couldn't leave Russia to come to Edinburgh to share the story with the fringe and she was like no I'm gonna do it and so she like crossed those borders when she shouldn't have done and put herself at risk in order to come to kind of inspire fringe. other people yeah mm -hmm. come to Edinburgh Fringe and inspire other people that to stand up for causes that they believe in mm. in a way that's more than just like sharing a tweet or like doing a podcast <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like yeah it just yeah. made me really think like god when was the last time i kind of put myself in and the situation where i was risking anything to stand up for stuff rather than easily standing up for stuff that... and to see it's like a real like to to see that they're real people as well and yeah they're not just like the names that we yeah hear about. Like... it's like wow you're a real person that has the same ability i have but you're doing a lot more with it exactly yeah <laughs> all you have really is your like Big voice up. your creativity your body isn't and using that in such a big way made me yeah. think there's always Active. more to be done yeah. there's always more potential possibilities so yeah that's my one for for the moment Papa? um mine would have to be i the one that i was thinking of for this month well uh, janelle monet obviously <laughs> but we i think i've used her as a feminist though before yeah um because yeah. i saw her in concert she's recently all, all time she's an all-time mm, feminist every day. you get to do this every episode yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we're like, we're always, trying to, yeah. always trying to find someone new. But um, I think the woman I want to shout about is Ash Sarka, who <gasps> is um, a journalist and all round amazing feminist woman activist. Um, she's an editor and writer for Navara Media. And she how best to describe what she does she basically calls out people on stuff they need calling out for and she kind of recently became like more prominent i'd like seen her and gone to panels of hers before but like um she kind of blew it recently with she did an interview with piers morgan to talk about um was it obama well who kept bringing up obama basically <sighs> i mean who cares what the premise was yeah he was giving yeah. this shit yeah and he oh that <laughs> really? was it he's trying to frame her that she was in love with obama and she's like i'm not i'm a communist like i'm literally a communist <laughs> like i don't like obama um and he she was, was criticizing trump and he was saying yeah but you love obama and he was problematic too and she was like no i don't yeah stop saying i love obama <laughs> yeah yeah that was it um she's incredible also follow her on twitter because she's like the perf oh my god her responses to things are just incredible she's so <laughs> funny she's so funny and fuses like popular culture with like left-wing marxist like ideology and like just like yeah it's amazing to watch her twitter feeds because she just res and she gets so many like men mansplaining to her like oh you're not a real communist like that's what this means and she's like actually and kind of like yeah goes off on them so yeah that would be my feminist phase that's a great one. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining thank us. You. Thank you for all your support as well. And uh, we will see you for the next episode. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Thank you to Katie and Kai for joining us in my warehouse to record this episode. It was an amazing interview slash chat. It was. I love those girls. I get honestly, I know we say this pretty much every time, but I could talk to them for hours. So yes, we had to cut it off at some point, unfortunately. Yeah, I hope we get to hang out with them again though, because they were so lovely. Yeah. Check out Strangers on ITV every Monday at 9pm. So as usual, we're gonna do a roundup of shows that we recommend that we think you should see in kind of October, November time. So the first one is Hear Me Howl at the Old Red Lion Theatre, and that is on until September the 29th, so you haven't got long to catch it. 
And that is a character called Jess, who's turning 30, when she decides to stop everything and join a punk band, post-punk band. I don't really know what the difference is, but it sounds cool. Post-punk band, yeah. I'm, I'm liking it already. She joins a band, and the picture is like the girl playing the drums, and it looks awesome. Cool, cool, cool. Also, there is Dance Nation at the Almeida Theatre, which is on until the 6th of October. And Dance Nation is about a bunch of teenage girls entering a dance competition in America. And it's about what teenage girls go through, what they talk about. Beth's seen the show. I have seen it. I got a £10 matinee ticket. Top tip, cheaps at the Almeida. Um, It was much more dark and gory than I expected and it was just full of life and just full of that kind of like magnificent energy of teenage girls which is amazing by the way because the performers are not teenage girls and they just harness that energy and it's just fantastic go cool dance nation also there is Queen Margaret which is on at the Royal Exchange in Manchester which is also until October the 6th Queen Margaret follows um, the character, Queen Margaret, who often pops up in Shakespeare's plays. And this play focuses on who this character is, and it's starring our Bechdel favourite, Jada Nuka, who was in our first ever episode of the Bechdel Theatre podcast. I love her so much! We love her. It's the exchange, I'm sure, is it transferring? Moving? Who knows? Who knows? Go see it in Manchester. Fingers crossed. Oh, up next is Six at the Arts Theatre, one of our favourites from Edinburgh. It's a kind of musical, like, pop gig about Henry VIII's wives. Have we already talked about it on the podcast? I think we have. I think we already recognised it in Edinburgh. If we haven't already, I wrote about it on the blog, but it's on the Arts Theatre in London until October the 14th. Skinner Cat is on tour. Skinner Cat has had an amazing journey in terms of starting off in London, it was on at the vault, it was on at the bunker, and now it's just gone up to the end of a fringe. I think we spoke about it on a previous episode as well, and it is now touring the UK. So um, head over to the uh, website to find where it's touring, because it's going all around. That's on until October the 20th. Skinny Cat is written by Isley Lynn, and it follows a uh, one woman's journey with her vagina, and how society kind of dictates our sex lives, what is a normal sex life, Oh, it's so moving and incredible. Uh, I really, really, really recommend it. Uh, Next up, we have The Sweet Science of Bruising. I love that name. At the Southwark Playhouse. And that is on from October 3rd until the October 27th. And it is about female boxers in 1869. So they're boxing in corsets. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my God. How does it... How does that even happen? Like, how can you bre- how can you box in a corset? Go and see. Go and find out. We'll go and see it to find out. Twelfth Night is on at the Young Vic, and from so that's starting in October, second of October until November seventeenth. This is the first play of um, Kwame's artistic directorship at the Young Vic, Woo-hoo! so it's gonna be cool. Also, I've heard previews of it's an it's like an adapt it's like a new version, like a shaken up version of Twelfth Night. And I've heard some of the music from it, and it is beautiful. Ooh. Yeah. So I think that one's going to be a hit. Cool. Heathers is currently on at the Theatre Royal Haymarket until the end of November 24th. Heathers is the musical adaptation of the cult film classic from the 80s, which originally starred Winona Ryder and Christian Slater and amongst other actors. And it's the musical version, which I saw and is amazing. It's a classic kind of high school movie following a female protagonist in her school. And it's about fitting in, getting through, surviving high school. The popular girls are three popular girls. It's very kind of Mean Girls-esque, but it goes down a really, really dark route. The character in the production is so sexually empowered and liberated that I didn't quite expect to be in the musical. The music is amazing. It's so nice to be in a theatre where there's audiences engaging and whooping and cheering. And it was full of young people. It was so interesting to be in a Western theatre full of so many young people. Um, So yeah, I highly recommend that. Go see Heathers. And also, there is uh, one that's been on our radar for a while at CPT coming up is a show called Everything I Am by Natasha Simone. And it is a show about being a black queer British woman so it's an autobiographical show and Tash kind of talks about um, her experiences of 
being marginalized by the marginalized and how sometimes the people within your own community can still be perpetuating harmful ideas and stereotypes and things like that, especially when you're in, you have many intersections to your identity. Um, and it's an amazing show. Nice to see another solo show after Edinburgh. Uh, we're feeling a bit dry from those. Everything I Am is on at CPT, 2nd to the 5th of October. Those are the shows we're recommending to you for this month. Also in this month's episode, as we're kind of drawing from our crowdfunder and all the support that everyone has given us over the past few months to be able to get to Edinburgh, we have some thank yous and shout outs to give to people who have particularly supported and donated us. So we would like to thank, in no particular order, Sabrina Mafuz, Kevin Hutchings, my dad, Kieran Patel, Yolanda Mercy, Rachel Duthie, Tanya D, Tanya Loretta D, Natasha Brown, Woo. James Rowland, Joanna Greeny, Mary Musgrave, Daniel Mawson, Jules from Soho Theatre, uh, Abigail Z. That, that I think that's Abby Zakarian. She's an amazing playwright. Cool. Um, Geraldine Rolf, Samuel Keefe, Anthony Clark Brown, Kristen Peters Roebuck, Carmela Brown. Jeremy Wong, Emily Collins, Sarah Haskins, Lola Drake, she is a baby, I know who she is, but thank you Lola, even though you can't talk, Dilshad Shawkey, Camilla Harding, Philippa Dawson, Elena Coleman, Sharon Morgan, Eleanor Theodoru, Sherelle, <laughs> Paven Sedigan, Raphaela Marcus, Ashley Packham, Isabel Dixon, Anna Richmond, and Julie Chung in Hin. Thank you so much, everyone. We said that we would give you a shout out on our podcast. All those people do fantastic work. So you might recognize some of those names anyway. So thank you for this episode. I know it's been a long one, but we will be back with a new episode next month. And we hope you enjoy. Thanks again to all our supporters. We love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.